He was born in Fredericksburg, Virginia on May 5th, 1924. Great, uh, great coach and worked hard at it and uh, uh, never said much. He wasn't uh, outspoken a lot, but he was a real fine coach. And uh, um, he uh, coached the kids the way they're supposed to be coached and taught them the things that they should know. And He was named the most outstanding athlete in his junior and senior years at James Monroe High School in Fredericksburg. Of all the people that I worked against and coached against, there wasn't anybody any better than Bill Long. In 1941, he was drafted by the Army to fight in Europe. Trained as a paratrooper, he was dropped three times during the four years of the war, one of them on D-Day. Bill Long was kind of like uh, the Bear Bryant of Douglas Freeman High School. You know, he was there, you felt his presence. After serving his country, Bill Long continued his studies at the University of Richmond and continued with his one true love, football. He was a man's man kind of a guy. And I think it re reflected right on to the youngsters that he was coaching. Bill Long coached the Rebels basketball teams from 1954 to 1959. Before handing the team over to his assistant coach, John Masello, his teams combined for a record of 58 and 40. You were expected to play well. Never heard him raise his voice. Um, didn't have to raise his voice. He could very quietly tell you something and, and you would walk through a wall if he said walk through a wall. Along the way, they won two district championships, two group championships, and finished third in the state tournament in 1958. He was a wonderful person to play for and he wasn't a bad X and O's coach because we were doing some things that as I look at the game today, we were pretty sophisticated and, and we played what he called a sliding zone. It's really a matchup zone, kind of a zone like Temple uses. And we held teams to 41 points a game that uh, senior year. He had us playing fast break basketball. I can remember it a million times in telling us, get the ball, get it out, get it to the middle and fill the lanes. His mastery at track produced a victory streak of 32 consecutive dual meets. The 63 game was probably one of the games that I'll always remember because it really meant if we could get through Freeman, we could win the state championship. I think if uh, people have told me like, it was like 9,000 people in attendance, it was a rainy night and um, unfortunately the Rebels came up short that night. And I remember playing at the Parker Field in a rainstorm. And I think we won the ball game 13 to nothing and we were state champions that year. So we had an excellent year throwing the ball. Well, we just couldn't do it that night. So we wound up losing the game and it was heartbreaking, but we still came back and won the next two games and wound up nine and one for the season. And then my senior year in 1967, They were undefeated and we were undefeated and we played here at Douglas Freeman. And I think Freeman wanted to beat us as bad as we wanted to beat them and the kids really got up for the ball game. The crowd here that night was probably the largest that's ever been in this stadium. Uh, and Coach Long, as I recall, treated the game like it was just any other game. Of course, it was not that to us. We all go home at night and look in the mirror and say, we hate Freeman. And I try to say we hate Bill Long, but I had a heck of a time doing that. <laughs> We were more than uh, normally excited to play that game, and we ended up beating Lane that night, uh, 27 to 14, and broke that streak. And I think breaking that streak and being able to present that to Coach Long meant uh, a great deal to the team, but particularly to us uh, as seniors, because it was such a big game. And I knew we were gonna get beat sooner or later, but if we got beat, in the back of my mind, I wanted to be by a good team. And I'll tell you, when we came down here and played Freeman, Freeman, of course, won the state championship that year. We couldn't have played a better football team. He said uh, the Lane game was for us, the Hermitage game is for him. The talk would, would start about a week before the game. 
you know, you knew you were maybe playing John Marshall on Friday night, but then in the same sense, yeah, but next week is Hermitage week. When he would talk about Coach Long, he would say something about the Reverend, and uh, the Reverend does this, and the Reverend does that. He had great players. Uh, Marty Smith and some of those guys went into the pro ranks. Uh, he, he had great teams, no question about it. And he did a good job coaching.